perhaps don't understand and realize the significance of, of the coronation of our last monarch and the coronation now of King Charles III. Amazing to think that their, their coronation takes place on the very same stone, the very same throne, literally, if you like, as that of David himself. Um, so what a, look, God's got a fantastic plan. You know, our nation has lost sight of who we are and God's purpose and plan. And grant that Charles, when he takes the throne, will regain that and will see Britain, United Kingdom, be great once again for the glory of God. Let's read the scriptures, just a couple of verses from 1 Chronicles 28. Thank you, Stephen. And David summoned all the officials of Israel to assemble at Jerusalem, the officers over the tribes, the commanders of divisions in the service of the king, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of all the property and livestock belonging to the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the warriors, and all the brave fighting men. David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my fellow Israelites, my people. I had it in my heart to build a house as a place of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord, for the footstool of our God, and I made plans to build it. But God said to me, You are not to build a house for my name, because you are a warrior and have shed blood. I want to, in this season of prayer that we're in over the month, I want to focus in again on the ministry and on, on the aspect of prayer. And I want to speak for you for a little while this morning on the subject of this, when God says no, or when the answer is no. When the answer is no. Who likes yeses? Yeah. Who likes wait? <laughs> Who really likes no? Of course not. We don't like no. Now let's be honest. Nobody likes a spoiled child, do they? <laughs> Come on. Nobody likes a spoiled child. You see it all the time in various aspects of life. A toddler goes nuts and throws a tantrum in the middle of the supermarket aisle just because mom has said, no, you can't have that bag of crisps or you can't have that chocolate bar. Come on, anybody ever seen that? And I know the reaction is, we brat, look at that. <laughs> that mom needs to sort him out or that dad needs to take him home and warm his rear end. <laughs> It's a natural reaction. Oh, what about the teen who sulks in their bedroom for hours just because dad had said, no, you can't borrow the car today, or no, I'm not giving you a 20 pound note <laughs> to go out and blow it. <laughs> and they go off to go to their bedroom and sulk. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants that. The truth is, nobody needs that. We look at that kind of behavior and think, I know what I'd give them. <laughs> and yet, how many of us as God's children do exactly the same thing when God says no? Hmm? We throw a strop. <laughs> I'm not praying anymore. I'm on ahead, God. What are you trying to do to me? We throw a strop like that crazy kid, or we get angry and bitter, and even walk away from God sometimes because he says no. You know, as a natural parent, and, and those of us who are parents, we sometimes get frustrated with the behavior of our children. Well, don't you when they're growing up? But imagine how our Heavenly Father feels when we sulk and turn our face from Him. How does God feel when His children react like that just because He said no? Now, come on, before we get any further in this study, let me share this with you. There is no such thing as unanswered or unresponded prayer. God always hears, and God always answers. Listen to one scripture alone, says it all. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me, and I will answer you. End of story. Call to me, and I will answer you. God hears everything we ask of him, and he answers everything we ask of him. Just sometimes he doesn't answer it the way we want. We'll love the yeses when they come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, listen, I'm going to be doing great things for God now. And then sometimes God says, wait, and we go, like, Lord, that's not really fair. Like, you know, that, okay, look, I'm still going to hang in there, Lord, and I'm, I'm trying to be patient and wait, but come on, Lord, hurry up. And then sometimes God says no, and we turn into one of those spoiled brats that throws a fit in the supermarket. We don't like it when God says no. 
So let's get into our study. What do we do when the answer is no? I want to look firstly at three reasons why God says no. And then we'll look at our response to what that should be, okay? All right, here we go. God says no because he has a bigger perspective for our lives. God sees the big picture. You know, we have, we have trouble seeing, really seeing beyond today. I know we make plans for the future, and it's good to do that. And, and, and we, we try and, and, and do the best we can to, to plan and foresee what the future's going to hold. But the reality is, we don't know any more than what's happening right now, because we really don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But God sees the whole picture. He sees the finished painting, if you like. Listen to Hebrews 4.13. And in light of the fact that he sees that bigger perspective and bigger picture, sometimes he says, no, Hebrews 4.13, listen to it from the Living Bible. He knows about everyone everywhere. Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. There's nothing that's hidden from him. God knows it all. He knows everything from the moment you were born to the moment you're going to be taken out of this life. God sees it and beyond that, and God knows it all. And sometimes in light of the bigger picture, he has to say no. Listen to Proverbs 2, yet. God guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. You know, sometimes when God says no, he's actually doing you a good turn. He's protecting you from sticking your foot in your mouth. He's protecting you from walking into that trap. It's led around the corner for you. He guards the course of the... Come on, get that. He guards the course of... If you're following Jesus this morning, he'll never take you somewhere that he can't either take you out of or isn't taking you there for a purpose. God knows the end from the beginning, and that includes your life and mine. He knows what we need, and he knows what we don't need. God knows what's good for us and what's not good for us. Our Heavenly Father, like any good dad, does all he can to provide, to protect, and to nurture his kids. And in doing so, sometimes that means yes, sometimes that means wait, you'll have to wait on it, and sometimes it just means a downright no, you're not getting it. But it's all because God exactly wants to do that, provide, protect, and nurture us. The Lord Jesus, God manifest in flesh when he walked this earth, and believe me, in every area of living as he walked this earth, he's been there before you, and he's handled every situation that you'll ever have to come across. And when God says no, it's because, as we'd say here in Belfast, he's been there, done that, worn the T-shirt, and he sees the bigger picture. So if God says no, you just have to accept it. Because he sees the bigger picture. God looks and knows from a bigger perspective. Here's the second reason sometimes God says no. Not only does God have a bigger perspective and a bigger picture to look at, but God has a better plan for each of us in our lives. Listen to Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. These were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Did you hear that? They were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. (laughs) Uh, I love our God. I I just love God the way he does stuff. But listen to the punchline of the verse, because God had planned something better. (laughs) Come on. That should cheer somebody up this morning. Maybe you haven't got exactly what you wanted now, and maybe God said no, but you know why? Because God's got a bigger and better plan. There's something better ahead for you. Plans are important. We've already said it's good to plan ahead, whether it's to plan for a building to ensure it's safely built by laying out a plan, drawing up a plan, making sure it's accurate, whether it's planning for your finances to provide for your home and your family, or whether it's a life plan to give security for the future. It's good to set plans out and have plans. And God has a plan for your life and mine that's way beyond anything we could ever hope for or understand. God has a better plan that includes not only now, but our future eternity, as well as living this abundant life right now. Listen to Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. God says, this plan of mine is not what you would work out, and neither are my thoughts the same as yours, for my ways are higher than yours. Come on, let's think about it for a moment. I know whose plan I'd rather be involved in and be following and be secure in. I'd be rather in the plan that God has for me. 
Now, let me assure you of this one thing. If you and I will align our plans, and there's nothing wrong with making plans. I think it's a good thing. It's a sensible thing. That's why God gave us a brain. Sadly, there's very few people in life anymore seem to actually use their brain. <laughs> Sorry to digress. Susan and I driving up the road this morning, and b b both of us, our eyes nearly fell out of our head. There he was, Dennis the Menace t-shirt, blue shorts, sandals with socks on. Not pushing his grandchild. Not, 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 not pushing. He had a baby, he had a dog buggy with a dog in it pushing it up the road. Now, for all you dog lovers and pet lovers, I don't want to offend you this morning, but was he nuts? Seriously? <laughs> I'm not saying he won the subject. <laughs> I get into trouble. But look, I assure you, if we will align our plans with the plans of God, everything will turn out much better than we could ever hope for. Perhaps one of the issues really is our patience in aligning with God's plans. <laughs> and I'm speaking to JC here. We're always in a rush. We're always trying to get it done today or tomorrow or even yesterday <laughs> if we ever could do it. But understand this, God has all of eternity to fulfill his plan and his promises. He's not in the same rush we are. He's going according to his will, his plan, his purpose. So you know what, folks? Let's make our plans. Let's do our best to use the minds and the brains that God has given to us. But you know what? Let's chill out for a bit and trust and allow God to unfold his plan for our lives. Because he's got a better plan. Here's reason number three. Sometimes God says, no, isn't this good this morning? Huh? God says no because sometimes he has a greater purpose. 1 Peter 1, 7. The purpose of these troubles is to test your faith as fire tests how genuine gold is because your faith is more precious than gold. Sometimes God says no and we get offended, and we get uptight, and we think God's not the, the great father that he should be. And all the time, God's allowing the situations, the circumstances that we're in, and saying no, because he has a greater purpose for our life. You see, we look with temporal vision. Our three youth score years in 10, and mind you, I'm not far off. The end of the three years is cool. Pray for me that the Lord gives me a few years longer. Oh, amen. Our three score years in 10 means a short-term mindset and perspective and we purpose our lives accordingly. Look, at 67 years of age, three years to go to reach the three years scares me. I want to get as much packed into those three years as I possibly can, just in case God says you're not getting any more than the 70. And yet that's really stupid because God knows the exact time that he's my birth, my death, and God has already planned everything that's going to happen in between. So why should I get stressed out about it? What I don't get for God done today, I know he's reserved for me to get busy with it tomorrow. So come on, let's, let's follow God's greater purpose. And God's purpose is this. God has a great purpose to transform us, to perfect us, and to present us before his Father God in the image of himself, an image of perfection that will last forever. And you know what? If God wants to take a little longer to do it, I'm happy and fine about that. Listen to 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18. The troubles that you go through are quite small and won't last very long. Yet they will produce in us an immeasurably great glory that will last forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the scriptures continue. Don't look at the troubles you can see right now. Rather look forward to what you haven't seen yet. For the troubles we see will soon be over, but the joy to come will last forever. Ah, come on. What a great God. So when God says no, let's realize there is a purpose in it. God just doesn't go willy-nilly and think, I'll say yes now and no next day. No, God has a purpose in everything he does. And when God says no, there's a bigger and greater purpose to that answer of no. Think about it like this, if you will. When God has said no now, he's actually paving the way to say yes in the future for something bigger and better. So what should we do 
when God says no. We've, we've looked at two or three reasons why God can say no, and there are others. So what should we do when God says no? Well, let's look at the scripture we read this morning. At the response of the man after God's own heart, the word of God says, David is up in years. His desire to build a house for God is eager and purposeful within him. He wants to, to do something monumental for God before his years are up. It seems a wonderful and holy request to build a house for God, to build a great sanctuary. But what does God say? No. No. David's been planning for years. David's excited. David's ready to go with this dynamic project. And God says no. So I want to look at what David did as an example of how we should respond when God says no. Good advice from God's word. Principle number one, when God says no, we should respond like this, by praising him for all the times he's already said yes. Huh. Would, you, would you look at somebody next to you? And it, just, if you can't look at somebody behind you, just take a look at somebody. Now come on, seriously. The person you've just looked at and seen, they would not be where they are or who they are or in the blessing they are without God having said yes, 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 yes many times in our lives. David was a king, yes, and he lived in a grand palace and was surrounded by a loving family. And God had brought him from the days of being a shepherd boy to being literally the greatest man on the planet. Life was good. So before you throw a fit when God says no, before you get angry and act like a spoiled child when God tells you no, remember all the times that God has said yes to your prayers and brought you to where you are right now in his plan and in his purpose. And the fact that God has still more to give you in his plan and in his purpose. Come on. There's not one of us here can't thank God for a time that he's brought us through difficult circumstances. There's not one of us can't thank God for a time when he dealt with us financially, when we had no money in our pocket and God met the need. There's people sitting here today would, would literally be dead and in their grave by now if God hadn't stepped in and said, yes, I'm going to preserve your life. So come on. If God said no to you today, just keep praising him for everything he's already done and what he's going to do in the future. Here's the second response. If God says no, pray and ask him for wisdom on why he said no. Nothing wrong with asking God, well, why? Why, why did you say no, Lord? It's not as if David was asking some illicit request. He had a great desire, a, a wonderful thing to build God a house, and yet God said no. Why? Because God is infinitely wiser than we are. We need to begin with that thought. God knows best. God is not simply up in heaven somewhere floating on a cloud who wants to make our lives less happy. No, God wants what is best for his kingdom and for his children. Didn't he already say to us in the scriptures that we live the abundant life? And what is best for the kingdom and best for the king is best for his subjects. And in verse 3, when David asks the question, why, God gives the reason. David had been a man of war. He had been a man who had shed much blood. He had been a military leader. He had been someone who had taken his nation into greatness through his great exploits. But notice God's wisdom. A military leader does not always make for the best leader in peace. I'll say that again. A military leader does not always make for the best leader in peace. And the building of the temple was to be done during a time of peace. And God, I believe, did not want his ushers taking up the offering plate, wearing machine guns and machetes. No, he wanted his deacons and his officers to take up offerings in an environment of love, peace, harmony, and unity. So God said, no, you're not building it, he said. You haven't got the right temperament or the right nature at the moment to do what I need to do. The building of the temple would require the wisest man who would ever live David's son, Solomon, would outrank him in brain power and in wisdom. David was a courageous warrior, but his son Solomon would have the wisdom that God would give him to build a house for God. And so if God says no, don't be afraid to ask, well, Lord, I accept your answer, but is there a, is there a why here? Will, will you tell me why? Will, will, will you show me why? Will you help me through this? 
because God's wisdom is greater than ours. So if God says no, first of all, praise him for the times he'd said yes. Ask him for the wisdom and the strength to understand and go through why he said no. And thirdly, if God says no, he's actually saying, in the same word no, he's saying, trust me. Huh? Trust me. When God says no, he's saying, trust me. I've already been there. If you were going to do, if you, one of your kids was going to do something stupid or, or, or act in a silly way or ask for something that was going to harm them, what would you say? No, of course you would. And in doing so, you're asking them, even if they don't understand, you're asking them to trust you that you're making the right choice for them. And God is no different. Many times when God says no, he's simply saying, I'm not going to give you a reason. You don't have to even understand. I'm saying no so trust me as your father. David did not go to ground, <coughs> excuse me, David did not try to go around God's directive. He didn't bury his head in the sand and, and go to ground and ignore God. He did not ask God for a second opinion. God had said no, and that was that. David accepted God's declaration of no, knowing that one day God would finally say yes. And David was willing to do that because he had a great trust in the Lord his God. And we must trust too that God and everything he does in us and through us and for us is because of his goodness and because of his love for us. Listen to Psalm 25, 10. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. And Romans 8, 28 backs it up. You know it so well. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. When God says no, he's saying, you mightn't understand, just keep trusting me. Just keep trusting me. Just keep trusting me. You know, I or you don't have to understand the answer to know that it's motivated by the goodness and love of a great, loving, heavenly Father. Now look, when God says no, we can react in three main ways. When God says no, you can resist it and throw a strop you can resent it and get bitter and angry. Or thirdly, you can rest in him and trust him. And trust him. Let me finish with number four. Discipline number four for when God says no. If God says no to what you want or you think you want to do or what you feel you need to do or what you want to achieve, then rest in him because here... Fourthly, maybe it's an opportunity given by God to help somebody else achieve the desires of their heart. Look at this wonderful picture and wisdom of God. As you continue to read the rest of the chapter we read today, you see David, the old king, and his young son, Solomon. David gets out the blueprint for the temple, and he tells Solomon that God has revealed to him the pattern for the building of this great temple. I want you to envision in your mind's eye the father and son team leaning over a desk and studying the pattern of the temple together. You see, even though God had said no, David did not quit his desire for God or his ambition to see God's plans fulfilled. He still wanted to see the temple built, but God had said him no. So instead of pouting and quitting and throwing a hissy fit, what he did, he put all his help and effort into helping his son, whom God had chosen to build the temple. And I believe that sometimes when God says no to us, it's so that we can put our energies and our efforts into helping someone else or someone else that God is helping and leading forward to do something and complete something and purpose something in his will and in his plan. And that's exactly what Jesus did himself. Jesus said he did not come to the earth to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. And Jesus lived every day of his life helping others to achieve their heart's desire and their goals and their purposes. To the blind man, he gave sight. To the deaf man, he caused him to hear. To the woman at the well, he took away her loneliness. And that's what we can do too. Maybe God has said no to you at this moment because he actually sees you're able to help somebody else 
through their situation, through their circumstances, to fulfill their calling and their desire, to move forward in the plan and will and purposes of God. Maybe God said no to you so you can devote your energies to propping up someone else. Singers, musicians, you can come. So how will you respond when God says no? Would you like that spoilt child <laughs> get mad at God? Throw your hissy fit, embarrass yourself and everybody else around you. And most of all, sadden the heart of your heavenly Father. Or will you praise him for what he's already done and said yes? Will you ask him for wisdom to help you through the situation? When he says no, will you just trust God that he knows better and he's working out his plan on you? And if you can't do what you think you need to do or want to do, then help somebody else move forward in the plan and will and purposes of God. How will you respond when God says no? How will you react when the answer comes no? I want to leave this scripture with you from Lamentations 3, 21 to 23. Ready for it? How should you respond when God says no? Listen to this scripture. But this I will call to mind, and therefore I have hope. That the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Why? Because great is your faithfulness. It doesn't matter where you are this morning, what you're going through, what tomorrow brings, all of it really is of not any real great significance because of his faithfulness. Because he will not fail you. If we're willing to keep trusting in him, I repeat it again and stand with me, church, he will not fail you. So keep on trusting, keep on going. And even if the answer today is no, just say, thank you, Jesus. And be patient and wait for the yes that comes that takes you forward to a better place in the plan and the will and the purposes of God. God bless you, church. For